Hi everyone, Split Anthony Time, Time Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Joji project, Smithereens. This is the newest album from alternative pop and R&B artist, songwriter Joji, aka George Miller. It is the highly anticipated follow-up to his 2020 record, Nectar, which saw his songwriting and production reaching ambitious new heights, especially on highlights such as Run and Gimme Love. I didn't love the album as a whole, but easily this thing was his best and most most robust project yet. Really the biggest question I had coming away from this thing was how would he go on to top it in the future? But with Smithereens, uh, that seems to not even really be a concern. In fact, I think it's kind of a cop-out that this project is even being referred to as an album at this point. Really it's just an EP with several half-baked uh, semi-demos tagged onto the end of it with a second disc. But are there highlights on this thing? There are, but they're pretty much the songs that we have heard going into the project. Glimpse of Us, which in my opinion opinion is one of Joji's best songs ever. Powerful ballad, legitimately heart-wrenching lyrics, which see Joji in a perfect relationship. However, uh, it's not so perfect because he is haunted by the lingering memory of an ex, a past lover, the one that got away. The instrumental is super simple with uh, some basic piano and somber vocal harmonies, but it's uh, still hitting pretty hard. There's also Die For You, which I think is a really great piece of dreamy pop music with a kind of groovy beat. Lots of glossy keys and atmosphere in the mix on this one. One. Tune is solid, progression is solid, it's pretty handily one of the more well-structured songs on the project, especially considering the state of the other material, like the song Feeling Like the End, for example, which is this uh, somewhat cool trap-pop fusion that ends suddenly out of nowhere because it seems like at one point Joji just gives up on fleshing the track out fully, which is sad because there did seem to be some sharp ideas going into this track and to hear them not fully explored just seems like a loss. But do let me praise the song Before the Day is Over, which also takes a simple piano ballad approach as well, but this time around the chords and the vocal lines take almost like a 50s pop vibe a little bit, but in the context of this track, it's much slower, more dreamy, just uh, more syrupy. The moody build toward the end isn't too bad either, I guess. And then finally on the first disc, there is Dissolve, which is an attempt at an acoustic ballad with super washed out production and a lot of heavy handed auto tune on the layered up vocals that make the track, frankly, kind of grating to listen to. So yeah, that's the first disc. Past this point, we have four more songs, but all of them are neither all that bad or all that great. They feel mostly mid and kind of unfinished. To a degree, they're barely even worth picking through unless you're a hardcore fan. There's a demo that's going absolutely nowhere. There's also an interlude. On a four track thing, there's an interlude. Your entire record is 24 minutes long in total. You do not have time for filler. And the final track is labeled as a freestyle, though it, it definitely does not sound like a freestyle in, in the traditional sense. Though maybe to a degree Joji just wants to think he's kind of winging it at this point in the record. But yeah, yeah, this track for the most part just feels like a very moody piece of alt balladry with some trap beats, some beautiful pianos mixed in too, the vocals aren't too bad. Uh, you know, again, it's another moment that has interesting ideas but none of them are fleshed out or coalesce in such a way where it feels like a hard-hitting track that leaves an impression. It's just more of a sketch of a song than a song. Knight Rider as well has some interesting ideas on it, but uh, you know, developmentally there's not really anything about how the song comes together that makes it anywhere near as impressive or as memorable as, you know, any number of songs from Nectar, which, you know, just kind of contributes to this overall feeling that this project is uh, kind of a few steps back from that record. Or even when Joji's songwriting chops were arguably much rougher than they are today on like his, you know, Ballads 1 project. Yeah, I'm not really crazy about this one, sadly. It has a couple of great tracks on it, but uh, outside of that, it just kind of seems like a wash, seems like, um, you know, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, effort being put into this one. Hopefully this project is just like a hump or a transitional moment and we end up getting something more interesting down the line because I'm feeling a strong 4 to a light 5 on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Joji, forever.